Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to install your own solar system. It's actually not as difficult as it sounds. All you need is only four components and how to put them together. If you would like helpful tips on how to live off-grid, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. The first component is the solar panel. It will convert sunlight into electrical energy. On the market, you will mostly find monocrystalline and polycrystalline solar panels. Monocrystalline panels are smaller, so they require less roof space for the same output than the polycrystalline, but slightly more expensive. If you have limited space, I would recommend monocrystalline. But if you have enough space for play, go for polycrystalline because they both last a long time. Be sure to check with brands, though. The next component is the battery. It stores the energy generated by the solar panels for use when the sun isn't shining. You will mostly find lithium ion and lead acid solar batteries on the market. Lithium ion has a lot of advantages over lead acid. You get more usable energy from what you store and it can be discharged up to 80 to 100% compared to lead acid which is only 50 to 60% for safe discharge. Lithium ion also has a long lifespan of 3000 to 6000 plus charge cycles which is around 10 to 15 plus years of use compared to lead acid which has 500 to 1200 charge cycles or 3 to 5 years. The third component will be the charge controller. This regulates the voltage and current from the solar panels going to the battery to prevent overcharging or deep discharging of the battery, protecting and extending battery life. You will mostly find two types. MPPT and PWM. The MPPT will be more efficient, extracts maximum power even in varying sunlight conditions, while PWM will be simple, cheaper, but less efficient. The fourth and last component will be the inverter. This converts DC or direct current power from solar panels or battery into AC or alternating current power used by most appliances like laptops and phones. On the market, you will mostly find two types pure sine wave inverter and modified sine wave. The pure sine wave produces a smooth, natural sine wave just like the power from your utility grid, which is safe for all electronics, even sensitive devices like motors, compressors, and microwaves. While on the other hand, the modified sine wave produces a stepped, choppy waveform that approximates AC but isn't smooth. Good for basic or resistive loads like bulbs. Again, don't forget to check with the right brands. At the end of the video, I will share with you my recommendations. Please stick around. You will need wires to connect the four components. Wires that connect the charge controller to the battery. Wires that connect the charge controller to the solar panel and wires that connect the inverter to the battery. Be sure to have a Phillips screwdriver and adjustable wrenches. Before you start planning your system setup. You need to know which system you want to install. The most common ones are 12 volts, 24 volts, and 48 volt system. In this video, we shall use the 12 volt system. So we have 12 volts, 200 watts monocrystalline solar panel, a 12 volts, 100 amp hour lithium ion battery, a 12 volts, 30 amps MPPT charge controller, and a 12 volts, 500 watts pure sine wave inverter. It's important to connect the charge controller to the battery before connecting the solar panel so that you don't damage your charge controller. Underneath you will find six holes to plug in cables. Two holes have PV negative and PV positive. PV stands for photovoltaic. This is where we shall connect the solar panel later. The next two holes are the ones where we connect the device to the battery. Bat negative and bat positive. These are the ones we are going to focus on in this step. The last two holes are for adding the load which we don't need for this video. We can connect both the charge controller and inverter to the battery at the same time. The cables that connect the charge controller to the battery have lugs on one side which connect to the battery, while the side that connects to the charge controller will be stripped. Please be sure to check which cable is positive or negative to make sure the connection is correct. In most cases, red cables are positives while black cables are negatives. To install the cables, make sure the terminals of bat negative and bat positive are open. Insert the negative cable first and screw it up with the Phillips screwdriver. Make sure it's firm enough so that the cable doesn't come out. Then we shall insert the positive cable, tighten it properly with the Phillips screwdriver. 
Next, we are going to grab our cables that connect the inverter to the battery and attach them to the inverter. This is done before connecting them to the battery. The cables that connect the inverter to the battery have lugs on both ends. Depending on the model of your inverter, unscrew the negative bolt and connect the negative cable. Then unscrew the positive bolt and connect the positive cable. Again, make sure it's tight enough. Now we are ready to connect the charge controller and inverter to the battery. Join the negative cable of the charge controller with the negative cable of the inverter and connect them to the negative terminal of the battery. Tighten them up properly. Please I kindly ask you to check if the wires are connected properly, negative to negative and positive to positive. Next we shall join the positive cable of the charge controller with the positive cable of the inverter and connect them to the positive terminal of the battery. It's always recommended to add a fuse to the positive cable of the inverter. We have a 500 watts inverter so a 60 amps fuse works fine. Please make sure everything is tight enough. So now we can see that the charge controller is turned on and the voltage of the battery is displayed. The last bit is connecting the solar panel to the charge controller. Here we are going to use the cables that connect the solar panel to the charge controller. One end has MC connectors that connect to the solar panel. And the strip side is the one that connects to the charge controller. So connect the cables to the solar panel. Make sure the negative is connected to the negative and the positive is connected to the positive. Then on the charge controller, connect the negative cable to the PV negative and screw tightly. Then connect the positive cable to the PV positive and screw tightly. After that, the charge controller will display that the solar panel has been added and the battery is charging. Awesome. Now that we have reached to the stage, the only thing left is testing our system with a load. Add your load to the inverter for example phone or lamp and test. That is all. It wasn't so hard. So now let me provide you with the price of each component and the best brands. For the inverter, I would recommend the Victron 12 volts 500 watts pure sine wave inverter. It's priced at $132. The charge controller would be the Victron 12 volts 30 amps MPPT charge controller, priced at $125. Then for the battery, I would recommend Lee Time 12 volts 100 AH lithium ion battery priced at $209. For the solar panel, I would recommend Renogy 12 volts 200 watts monocrystalline solar panel. The cables that connect the solar panel to the charge controller can be 10 gauge, priced at $17 for 10 feet and the cables that connect the charge controller to the battery can be 8 gauge, priced at $27 for 8 feet. A 60 amps fuse will ran just for $6, so the total will be $682. The cables that connect the inverter to the battery usually come included with the inverter. All the links are included in the description. If you're working with a small space like a camper van, or you don't always have consistent sunlight, a solar generator can be a great option. Brands like Bluetti or Jackery make portable power stations that can be charged via solar panels, a wall outlet, or even your car. But the price will be a bit high if you include a separate foldable solar panel. All the links are included in the description as well. Thank you very much for watching until the end. I have maximum respect for your attention span. Take care.